Chapter 4, Asset Life Cycle Management Acquisition. In Design Studio, we were always taught to assess the existing conditions, to conduct an analytical study, and to present our findings graphically through diagrams, charts, and drawings. My grandmother, who passed away two years ago, as my former pastor, would often mention that I was very analytical, the way I would pick a scripture apart and talk about it. A management consultant service is based on the premise of an initial assessment, analysis of a problem that leads to solution implementation. With this said, it should not be surprising that when acquiring assets intended to create value for business, we would recommend you start with research, planning, and return on investment calculations. When conducting market research for your business initially, you probably uh, went to the public library, local university, industry-specific news resources, among other databases and resources for business market research. If you couple this activity with creating a business plan, you should find your research skills sharpening as you update the plan annually with ever-changing data of the next decade. When we plan to create or to acquire an asset, we conduct research on the cost, the characteristics, the risk, the maintenance cost, the storage requirements, the supply cost, the return on the investment, the payback period, and the reviews associated with the asset. We look at the potential longevity, the growth potential, and the overall impact of the asset. We look at each asset collectively and individually, selecting good, better, and best options and case scenarios. Once a decision has been made that a certain asset is favorable to our business, we seek to create or to acquire that asset. We proceed with the procurement, transaction, creation, where applicable, whatever it takes to receive the asset. Complete acquisition means to us that we own or have a controlling interest in that asset. We have the right to say what happens over the life cycle of the asset.